Learning objective number one is to learn how to prepare a flexible budget. We'll begin by examining some characteristics of a flexible budget. Our planning budget was prepared before the period began. It really only valid for our original planned level of activity. If our actual level of activity differs from that which was originally planned, which it probably will, we'll find it's misleading to try to evaluate our performance by comparing our actual costs to our original or static budget. Our flexible budget provides us an estimate of what our revenues and cost should be for any level of activity within a specified range. In other words, we'll look at our actual level of activity and our flexible budget will tell us what should our cost have been at that level of activity and what should our revenues have been at that level of activity. We can then easily compare our flexible budget with our actual results and we'll be making more of an apples to apples type of comparison. Our flexible budget will help managers control cost and improve performance evaluation. Let's look at a flexible budget for Larry's Lawn Service. Larry's Lawn Service provides lawn care in a planned community where all lawns are approximately the same size. At the end of May, Larry prepared his June budget based on his expectation of mowing 500 lawns in the month of June. Since all the lawns are similar in size, he felt the number of lawns mowed in the month would be the best way to measure the overall activity level for his business. Here's Larry's planning or static budget. We can look at the equation for revenues. $75 times the number of lawns will give us our revenues. Wages and salaries has a fixed component of $5,000 plus a variable component of $30 per lawn. And again, he expects to cut 500 lawns. Gasoline and supplies and maintenance are purely variable. Gasoline is $9 per lawn. We estimate equipment maintenance at $3 per lawn. Our office and shop supplies are fixed at $1,000. Our rent is fixed at $2,000. Our equipment depreciation and our insurance are also fixed. So based on a planning budget or static budget, our expectation of cutting 500 lawns, Larry expects to make a profit in June of $5,000. Let's go ahead now and look at his actual results for the month of June. In looking at his uh, actual results for the first month of June, one of the first things we can look at is his net operating income. It's $6,450, which is higher than he had expected. It's not particularly surprising, though, because he actually cut 550 lawns compared to his original expectations of only cutting 500 lawns during the month. Let's go ahead now and compare his actual results side by side with his original planning or static budget. When we calculate or take the difference between our planning budget and our actual results, we calculate what's called a variance. Again, a variance is simply the difference between two numbers. Notice his revenues are $5,500 more than expected. Overall, his expenses are $4,050 higher than he had originally expected. And we look at those two numbers, and we shouldn't be surprised because he did cut more lawns than he had anticipated. And that should generate more revenues and also generate or cause him to incur more in the way of costs. When we look at variances, we will consider variances to be favorable for a revenue variance if revenues are higher than originally expected. And expense variances will consider to be variable, favorable if the actual cost incurred is less than we had originally budgeted. And that also means then that if our expenses turn out to be higher than we had originally budgeted, we will interpret those as being unfavorable variances. We need to be careful in interpreting our variances. Just because he has some unfavorable variances, does this necessarily mean that Larry has done a poor job at controlling costs? And for the favorable variances, does that mean he's done a good job at controlling costs? For example, consider the wages and salaries and our gasoline and supplies. Since we cut more lawns than we had originally expected, we would expect these costs to be higher. So we really can't answer those questions of has he done a good job or a poor job at controlling cost because comparing our actual level of activity with our static budget, 
we are comparing different levels of activities, 550 lawns versus a planned 500 lawns. This is where our flexible budget comes in. It will allow us to answer the question and identify how much of the cost variance, the difference in our actual and original plan cost, is due to the fact that in this case for Larry, he had a higher level of activity, and how much of it was due to good or poor cost controls. Preparing our flexible budget relies on the distinction between fixed and variable cost. Recall total variable costs change in direct proportion to changes in our activity level, while our total fixed costs remain unchanged within our relevant range. When we put together Larry's original planning budget, or looked at it, we identified some of our costs, wages and salaries, that had both a fixed and variable component. Other costs, gasoline and equipment, were purely variable, while our office shop uh, and utilities, rent, and equipment depreciation, and insurance were purely fixed. So our cost behavior is going to be important for us as we prepare our flexible budget for 550 lawns. Let's go ahead and prepare that flexible budget for Larry's lawn service for 550 lawns. At 550 lawns, we'll take the 550 and multiply it by 75 to get our expected flexible budget revenue of $41,250. Our wages and salaries will be the same $5,000 fixed component, but this time we'll add to it um, $30 times 550 lawns, we'll add to that $16,500 in variable cost. Our gasoline and supplies is $9 times 550 lawns for $4,950, and so on, down through all of our budget line items, using our specific cost equations that break our cost into both our fixed and variable components. Let's go ahead and walk through another example. Puget Sound Divers is a company that provides diving services such as underwater ship repairs to clients in the Puget Sound area. The company's planning budget for May appears below. During May, the company's activity was actually 110 diving hours compared to the 100 that had been planned in the static budget. Let's prepare a flexible budget for that level of activity. Our revenues will be $40,150. That's 110 hours times our $365 per dive. Our wages and salaries expenses will be $21,750. That's the $8,000 fixed component plus $125 per hour times 110 actual diving hours. Our supply expense is completely variable. It's $3 per dive, so $3 times 110 gives us $330. Our equipment rental has a fixed component of $1,800 and a $32 per hour variable component. So 1800 plus 32 times 110 gives us total equipment rental cost of $5,320. Our insurance cost is fixed at $3,400 a month, and our miscellaneous expense has a fixed component of $630 plus a variable component of $1.80 per dive. So our total expenses will be $31,628, giving us a net operating income for our flexible budget of $8,522.